Does a member of 45 years know everything about the Mormon Church? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. We're finishing up our interviews up in here, up here in Burley, Idaho. Hey, Burn, I guess specifically we're here. And it's just been a joy to, to meet these good people. And Mike Yost is the uh, pastor here at this church, Springs Calvary Chapel. And we appreciate his hospitality and Cheryl, his wife, and all they've, they've been doing for us. And uh, Glenna, I guess you were instrumental in getting this whole thing put together, somebody said. You kind of was the impetus or something about getting just, us up here. I just signed the paper that came around <laughs> that asked if I was willing to, to share your meet story. With you. uh -huh. So this is Glenna Whitaker, and uh, we appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. Were you born and raised in this area? I was born and raised in Rupert. Oh, oh mm -hmm. so that's just very close. Four and a half miles. Yeah. Have you been here your whole life? <clears throat> no, we took a ten-year. Uh, traveling vacation, uh, my husband <laughs> and I. Ten-year vacation? A ten-year vacation. Yeah. Uh, as part of my story, uh, I was a practicing alcoholic and I hit a bottom, a real hard bottom, and one night I fell out of bed on my knees and asked the Lord, you've got to do something, I just can't do this any longer. My nightmares were black and ugly and dark. Oh. And so I know <laughs> what the Bible says about hell yeah. is true. And, you didn't want to... and the next day I made a phone call and I was able to go into the Port of Hope. And for 20, 32 days I was there. I was supposed to be there 28, but I, in lieu of the, my drinking <laughs> and our, our sprees, it, they were always around vacation times. So, oh. And it was... Um, Labor Day, and they thought it would probably be a good idea if I didn't go out oh, of the center until oh, after Labor, Labor Day. Day. So you got a couple extra days in there. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. How old were you at this point? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. But you were were your were your were your parents Mormon? Oh yes. Very. I was born under the covenant. My three older siblings were not. Oh. Uh, I had a. But your folks were sealed in the yes, temple, and so yes. you were born mm -hmm. and. Okay, and I know you went to primary and Sunday school and soccer and meetings. And yeah, was in the chorus, and, yes, seminary. Yeah. Um, did all those, okay. all those things. Just what good Mormon kids do, and I guess your, mm -hmm. are your folks, were they active then their whole life after that? Oh, uh, yes, they were, yeah. always, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. So um, The pillar of the neighborhood. They helped all the little ladies. And, did they? Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was here in, was that still in, in Rupert? Rupert then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So after high school then, what happens? You After high school, I, uh, I had a child out of wedlock when I was 17. Oh. So I quit school. However, I have got my GED. <laughs> uh, and at that time, my husband and I uh, were in a business of our own, and we had a chance to go to Arizona to do some electrical work. Uh -huh. And while we were there, uh, it worked out that uh, we were put in charge of a mobile home park at Apache Junction. Oh yeah, I know Apache uh, Junction. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wonderful. And I was in the office and I had a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. And that's where I met Dr. Charles Stanley on the television. <laughs> and the first couple of times I listened to him, he just, oh, he just drew me and I went and got me a notebook and boy, I started taking notes. Well, in AA, there's also a spiritual advisor, and she had this little book she kept giving to me every week, and she'd have all these things outlined. John 3.16. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then a lot in Romans. Uh, and it just, about a month of really studying. One day I fell off. My chair in the bedroom yeah, on okay. my knees and received Jesus under Charles Stanley. Well, it wasn't long after that they sold the trailer park and we were going to go to California and operate a 
apartment. But the lady they sent me to t to take my place, yeah. she came in for training, and the second day she says, I don't understand you. You have a heart, you're not a bitter, nothing, I just don't know. <laughs> but I know one thing, I wasn't sent here to take your place, I was sent here to pray with you. Wow. And she, we got on our knees and received the Lord, and she was my witness. Oh my goodness. Yes, I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> did this all happen very quickly in your oh, life, or did it happen over a period of time? This was after the Lord took me to the deserts in Arizona. Yeah. Yes. And were you, then this time that you were listening to Charles Stanley was in, in Apache Junction, yes. but, and you were taking notes, had you uh, ever heard the gospel message before? Never. You didn't? Did you, it as a Mormon, did you, know, do, no. did you know who Jesus was? Not the real Jesus of the Bible. What, who did you think he was? Well, I knew that he was born of a virgin. <laughs> I knew that in my heart. I, as a Mormon, I mean. Yes. Yeah, okay, uh -huh. you knew that as a Mormon. Uh -huh. And that's the way I always thought of him. Did you believe his, he was your elder brother? Well, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And, the, and I have a hard time with that today. Oh, my God. Ooh. Gee, I but my boy, my oldest son, just keeps trying to get me. Well, he fouls me up, really, with doctrine. Yeah. And so I just try to be quiet and, <laughs> and not let him do that. He's still a good Mormon boy. Very huh? much so, yeah. yes. Well, it is hard to... Uh, sometimes separate what's Mormon and what's Christian, but took as far ten, as it took you 10 years? 10 years. Did it? Yes. Try to figure out what... Uh, I kept trying to go back even after I received Jesus. I just I didn't know what, where to go. So we went... You figured the church, the Mormon church had the answers? I don't know what I thought. Yeah. You yeah. know, I was still coming out of uh, alcoholism. Well, the, and it takes a while to do that. Yeah. You don't do that overnight. It took about three and a half to four years for that thinking to... To really change. Yes. Well, I'm proud of you for being able to make that change. That's, oh, that's not an easy one, It's a one, wonderful it? program. Yeah. Wonder in fact... But finding the, Jesus helped that, I guess. I'm sorry. I didn't well, know. that's who put it together was uh, a, a Catholic, and I don't know about Dr. Bill, but anyway, there was a there was a lot of scripture, yeah, in the in the program, in the program. and process and and inventory and forgiveness and mm -hmm. asking and repentance. Yeah, I mean, and so that door opened there and worked right into it. Yeah, and finding some how, higher power or something. Yes, and, well, uh, and that's what the the first thing they says um, you need to get a higher power of your own. Yeah. Uh, so pick out a man that you can really <laughs> admire. So I t put, picked out my dad. Oh, he did. Huh? And I, could, I could love a, a Lord like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. But so I, what kind of notes did you take? Just oh, about I'll, when he, he would do scriptures, mainly in Romans. I didn't get into Ephesians till way later, but mainly Romans, I believe. And then... Yeah. When I was struggling before I was introduced, I guess, to AA, I had tried to read the Bible. It yeah. made absolutely no sense to me. <laughs> After coming to know the Lord, it started making sense. Isn't that amazing? Where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> I had that same experience. Yeah, well, it's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and all of and a sudden still, it becomes clear. And and now you can't get enough of the Bible, no, right? No, I can't. I have studied and And that's studied. many years now. Oh, yes. And you yes. still love the Bible. And loving it, yeah. yes. And Jesus is what he's done for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We never I don't understood understand that. understand that love. Yeah. Did you, I mean, I know I ask this all the time, but do you think Mormons understand grace, what that really is? Their grace just isn't part of their... They're Thank working you. it into their program now. Right. Do you think so? I do. Well, I know they, they do a lot of works still. The, uh, works yeah. is it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But I think they're trying to be more Christian, but it's... Uh, you see it coming more and more all the time. Yeah. Little little changes, but there, there's got to be a, an entire shift of 
of thinking where it's not about me, it's not about us, it's not about the church or prophets, it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Jesus yeah. is enough. Yeah. <laughs> but they need to get in and study their own doctrine. The well, if they I... do, they learn quickly that it's it's got problems mm -hmm. compared to the Bible and yes. so on. Yeah. yeah. But well, that's neat. very young in life, when we, I have a twin sister. I had a oh, twin you do? sister. And she was very, very active. All my family is very, very active. But when we were baptized, she jumped out of that water and she was just bubbly and everything all over. And I <laughs> couldn't imagine what was wrong with her. Needless to say, I knew it did not take. I do believe in my heart that somewhere back there hidden, Jesus had called me before the beginning of time. And I knew there would be a day when I chose to be baptized. Oh. And it wouldn't be my parents that made that decision. And it wouldn't be at age eight, huh? Mm -mm. And did that happen? Yes, in Tonopah, Nevada. So I'll tell you how I got there. Yeah, please do. We finally moved to Goldfield, Nevada on another uh, trailer park, redoing trailers. And um, we were sitting above on a hill, just down the hill was a little church down there. And I kept looking down there and watching people go there. And <laughs> I go back to studying and praying and what am I going to do? And look down that hill and see them people going in that church. And I thought, you know, I think it was a, a whisper in my ear. You ought to go down there and try that out. <laughs> and I did. What church was it? First Baptist Church. A little Baptist it? church in Gold Hill. What did Adam. you think? I loved it. Is that the first time you'd gone to a Christian yes, church? absolutely. What did you think? I loved it. They did were you? so friendly and yeah. loving. And it wasn't long after that we moved to Tonopah and got into the Baptist church there. And I had a lot of friends there do they A. They also oh. went to that church. Oh. And so we combined the two friendships yeah. and grew there, and that's where I was baptized. Wow. Mm -hmm. And did you notice differences between what they were teaching and what you'd been taught oh. as a Mormon? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I really didn't get into deep Bible study other than reading scripture until I moved to, we moved back to Burley. Okay. And we've had a ladies' Bible study for over 20 years. <laughs> and we've studied under some of the most fantastic men and women. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? It is. And you can't almost, you can't, you can't learn enough. I mean, you, you just can't. keep learning and you learning. You just can't. I have, yeah. I have stacks and stacks and stacks of books and uh, Bible studies. Yeah. And, it's a good thing because I don't have a really great memory. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of that same way. I need to keep reading it, and mm -hmm. keep getting reinforced. Mm -hmm. I just wish the Mormons would open up their Bible and really read it as a child. That's you my prayer. Yeah, that we could get them to, to really read and to mm -hmm. think about what the Bible says. And what I'm most impressed about as I've come out is what Jesus talked about and what he didn't talk about. He didn't talk about temple marriage and baptism for the dead and families are forever and all the mm. things. Priesthood. He never mentioned priesthood. He never once but said. But they surely do. We know oh, that he's here, our Macalistic priest. Well, of course, we know he is and he's our high priest. And he is. But Mormons just don't have that and don't. they just assume that. Anyway, they, they just don't have the same, you know, and what Paul taught. Um, as the gen apostle to the Gentiles, he didn't talk about all those things either. No, he told us that our body is a temple of the living Christ. That's right. <laughs> and that isn't that a relief? It, it is. And there's such freedom and joy in that. Oh, message, it is. It? Yeah. Yes. Well, shoot, I'm sorry to hear that you're, some of your family's been upset at you. That uh, When they first found out that I had become Christian, my boy took his family away from me. Oh, really? They have four children. We're back to visiting, but they, they never come to see me. Oh, my goodness. Only my son. He comes at least once a month and sometimes twice. And then... And this is your oldest son? Yes, my comes? oldest son. But also... Where does he live? He lives in Salt Lake. Oh, okay. My sisters are... 
and their families are distant with me. And I, I didn't put it together until here lately, doing some inventory work and watching what was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting that you've turned your life to Jesus? And that's, but, and that's what you're being kind of judged for. It is. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and yet you feel such peace and freedom. Oh, I do, and that's what's so neat. <laughs> my boy will say, "I remember seeing so much joy in one person." He says that about mm -hmm. you. You're always so happy. Yeah, you're a delight. You know, actually. <laughs> and <laughs> and they works don't do that. Yeah, no, works put you under a bondage. And, it does. And make you feel guilty, and mm -hmm. you fall short. And guilt and shame just is. Well, that's just what took me down, Yeah, you know? There was no way I was ever going to be good enough. In fact, my parents told me that I would never be good enough. <laughs> and you believed them. <laughs> and, I, and I believed they were good of it, and I went out and proved to them, yeah. Well, so what happened this, this one particular night that you do fall to your knees? And I mean, what, what precipitated that? And My husband and I had uh, got into a, an argument. And uh, I left the house, and I called a friend, and she came and got me and took me over to a motel. Well, before then, I'd been having these deep, dark dreams. dreams. You've mentioned oh, yes. That. I mean, it was like darkness. I can understand what it means in, when they say Jesus is a light. Yeah. Because you were in the opposite direction. Because I right? had already been in the darkness. Yeah. And then when you get to be in that light, oh my. But that night, I had hit a bottom that I could not, I would have been gone within just days. I know I would have. And when I fell on my knees, he opened the door to recovery. Yeah. He took me to the desert <laughs> where I found Christians. Yeah. And don't, there was plenty of Mormons there, sure, that's for sure. sure. But I got into a Christian community. Yeah. And they, then he just led me through the desert, and right, right to the people I needed to, yeah. to help nourish and feed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great God. Huh? Oh, he is good. <laughs> and we praise him and, uh, oh. and just are so grateful for what he's done. That's one thing I need to maybe say. When I first received Jesus, I spoke in tongues. And it scared me. <laughs> and I wouldn't do it again, because yes. you know, Mormons don't do that. <laughs> no. And after a, oh, about 10 years of study, it happened again. Just, just you and God. Me alone. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for that gift. Really? That's, so grateful. Well, I've heard of it, but I haven't experienced it. Well, but. it scared me when it first happened. And, and I and you know... You didn't mean for it to happen? I you didn't. Weren't, you weren't no. seeking it or anything? No. Uh -uh. Wow. Interesting. But when they talk about gifts, yes, I have <laughs> received a couple of really great ones. <laughs> oh, that's it. Well, one gift you have is writing poetry. And I love, uh, I love it when it happens. Yeah, and you've got one here. I'd love to have you share it. Okay. If you would, it's called. I had led my oldest grandson to the Lord, oh. and after, after, he we knelt in prayer and he received Jesus. I must tell you about him. He went to church. How old was he? He was what probably about twenty-four. Okay. We went to church and because they got baptized. And the day he was baptized, when he came out of the water and came back and sat down by me, he says, I have never been on such a high in my whole life. <laughs> this is awesome. Really? I mean, the feeling just, oh, it was just wonderful to see. Yeah. So the Lord gave me this. And I call it born again. Yeah. We celebrate the guest of honor. Jesus came to call. An empty contrite heart called out, Please save me from the fall. Come into my life, dear Lord, and fill my empty soul. 
I long to meet you face to face and witness all your grace. Adoption has been put in place, my sins you have erased. By the finished work of Christ, there's nothing left to do but praise and worship you, my Lord, for you calling me to you. Oh, that's, that's a neat gift to be able to do that. You know, you mentioned the word adoption in there, mm -hmm. and it, it struck me. I never had, I never understood that concept of being adopted as a son of God, mm -hmm. you know. It may help because my oldest son was adopted by my my husband. Oh, was he? Yes. Oh. Uh, he was just uh, two years old when we got married. A real adoption. Mm -hmm. huh? A real adoption. Yeah. And so when it's in Ephesians, I believe, where it speaks of the adoption. Yeah. You just know you've been adopted into the family of Christ. Yeah, and it's so different than thinking that you were born in the pre-existence as a son oh, and daughter yes. of God. Yeah. And to uh, and yet it says in the Bible that uh, only those that are uh, sons and daughters of when they believe. When and, they believe. Yeah, and there's and only one Christ. way. Right. That's the other thing. And that was one thing my, my daughter got me on. She says, Mom, how do you think, how do you think it takes to go to heaven? I says, oh, there's probably several ways, works, and she said, no, mother, <laughs> there's only one way. Did there's you only believe one her? door. Did you believe That's her? when I started really studying more. <laughs> and yes, now, absolutely. And this was but your daughter? Before, huh? no, yes, this is my daughter. Oh, so she came to the Lord and... Yeah. Actually, before I did. Did she? Mm -hmm. Where she? Where does she live? She lives in Rupert. I does tried she? to get her to come. Oh, she, <laughs> she, she didn't want to share her story mm -hmm. yet. Well, maybe sometime. She has a great story. I'll bet she does. She does. Yeah. But she led her mom to Jesus. Mm. Well, she didn't. But well, but she got yes, that. Yes, but we, Planted that seed that really yes, started growing. She planted the seed that helped me understand you there's just only never one know. way. Yeah. You just never know. And I think I'm, we're, we always pray that, in, in this case, your story maybe touches someone's heart and gives them a, a hope that there's, there, is there is life after Mormonism. And, that, mm -hmm. and the one thing we start out with is... Can a member know? Can a member of many years know everything, or do they know everything about the Mormon Church? And they don't. They have very shallow knowledge of of real Mormonism. Since I've come to know the Lord, I've probably found out more about it than before. <laughs> very typical. Oh that you yes. You know more about Mormonism now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're probably getting close to the end here. Uh, anything last minute that you want to say to? family or friends? Oh, I just, I pray my family. You love them so much. Just read right? the Bible. Yeah. Just read it word for word. And I've often said the only difference you would have to do is put that other book away, take that spear off the top of their building, put a cross on top of it. And <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Maybe President Nelson's been doing a lot of crazy things. Maybe he'll throw Maybe he'll do that start, one day. Take, the, take Moroni down and put the cross on yes. the temples and yeah. on the church buildings. And you call your you still call yourself bishop. Yeah, I do. Only because it means something to the Mormon people. And I get calls from people all over the country and the world, I guess. I've had a few phone calls outside the the country, and they know what that means to have been a bishop in the Mormon That's church. That's what I think you Yeah, yes. and that gives them, mm -hmm. at least gives me, I guess, the ability to speak as at least they know what I've been through to get to this point, and, and then to come to know Jesus and didn't know him as a Mormon, uh, certainly didn't understand who he was mm -hmm. and what he did for me. And so I'm so grateful for that message. I only have one high priest. I only have I, one bishop, and I that's Jesus. Too. But uh, and I hope he'll forgive me for using the, the title. But uh, it does, it means something to Mormons. Mm -hmm. and that's, It does. That's the whole business. It's an identification, I guess. Yeah. Is, okay. So that that's, they, <laughs> that's good. It's kind of in your face. I know, I realize that, but... <laughs> But it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's been interesting and, yeah, taking a little heat for it. But, uh, 
But you've got a wonderful story, Glenna, and, and you've overcome a lot of obstacles and oh, challenges. It's amazing. As a child, if it, I was told, thou shalt not, I went out to find out why. <laughs> and to be forgiven is uh, grace and mercy. You just cannot yeah. cherish it enough. There's no words in the dictionary <laughs> that describes it. that gratefulness yeah. there is to know I never the love of God. It. I, I don't. I know, I know so many LDS that just don't feel that they're worthy. That they can't do enough and not, not making it. They're just, they're not sure they're going to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And now when you're in Jesus and he's in you, you just know you're confident. You do. Yeah, Born again. Glenna, thanks for sharing your story. And yeah. anything, any last second, anything? Oh, I probably <laughs> left a lot of things out I'd like to share. But the, mo the most important is to know Jesus, the yeah. Jesus of the Bible. Of the Bible. I call him Yeshua Mashiach. Yeah. And that's who he is. Yeshua. Yeah. Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeah. Well, Jesus thanks. Our Messiah. Yeah. Yes. Well, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time here on the Ex Mormon Files.